Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Friday, so it's Return to Collecting Top 50 of all time. Today we're going to do number 13 on the list. He is one of the greatest pitchers of all time. His career was insane. Absolutely just amazing. So without further ado, let's jump into number 13. All right, guys, so number 13 is Grover Cleveland Alexander. Here's his 1913 national game. Um, this card sort of regarded as rookie card. He did have like a silk that was maybe a year earlier, but from a paper card, this was his first actual uh, baseball card. Here's the back of this one. It's a pretty cool image of him. <clears throat> so Grover Cleveland Alexander was born on February 26th, 1887 in Elba, Nebraska. He was one of eight children. He was born during President Grover Cleveland's first term, so his parents named him after the president. Alexander played baseball for St. Paul High School in Elba. Upon graduation, he started digging post holes for the phone company while playing semi-pro ball for $50 a week. He worked his way up to Class B League play with the Syracuse Stars. The Phillies bought out his contract for $750. His first major league game was on April 15, 1911. He had a great rookie season winning 28 games, the most ever by a rookie after 1900. He went on to win three Triple Crowns with the Phillies before he was traded to the Cubs in 1918. In 1926, he was traded to the Cardinals and helped them win the series that year. He was an aggressive pitcher with insane control. He is considered one of the greatest pitchers of all time. His achievements include four-time Triple Crown winner, some say three, but the pitcher who had a better ERA than him in 1917 was a reliever, so I'm not counting it. Five-time ERA leader, 300 win club member, and 1926 World Series champion. He led the league in wins six times, ERA five times, complete games six times, shutouts seven times, strikeouts six times. For his career, he had 373 wins, third all-time tie with Christy Mathewson, a 642 win-loss percentage, 436 complete games, 13th all-time, 90 shutouts, second all-time, 5,190 innings pitched, 10th all-time, and 2,198 strikeouts. He won the World Series in 1926 with two wins and zero losses, a 133 ERA, two complete games, and a save, 17 strikeouts with only four walks. After complete game victories in games two and six, he was called on to relieve Jesse Haynes in game seven with no rest. When he came in, St. Louis was ahead 3-2 to two in the bottom of the seventh inning with bases loaded. Tony Lazeri was up to bat, and he almost hit a grand slam off Alexander's first pitch but the ball went foul at the last second. Alexander then went on to strike Lazari out. He retired the next five batters before walking Babe Ruth in the ninth with two outs. Babe got caught stealing and the Cardinals beat the Yankees in the series. Ruth later said, just to see old Pete out there on the mound with that cocky little undersized cap pulled down over one year. Chewing his tobacco and pitching baseballs as easy as pitching hay is enough to take the heart out of a fella. Alexander retired in early 1930. He had a drinking problem that was taking a toll on his health at that point. He had the most wins of any pitcher who never threw a no-hitter. He was elected to Cooperstown in 1938. He was the only player elected that year. Upon retiring, he managed a barnstorming team and played against many of the greatest Negro League stars. He later opened a tavern in St. Louis. He died on April 4, 1950 at the age of 63. In 1952, he was portrayed by actor Ronald Reagan in the movie The Winning Team, Sort of cool to be named after a president and portrayed by another in a movie. Some quotes by Alexander are, Less than a foot made the difference between a hero and a bum, referring to Lazari's almost home run in the 1926 World Series. What do you want me to do? Let those sons of bitches stand up there and think on my time? Referring to why he quickly started pitching the batters. Some quotes about Alexander are, He made me want to throw my bat when I went to the plate. He fed me pitches I couldn't hit. If I let them go, they were strikes. He made you hit bad balls. He could throw into a tin can all day long. Hall of Famer Johnny Evers. His control was remarkable, the finest I've ever seen. Sports writer Grantland Rice. All right, guys, so we'll take a look one more time at the uh, Alexander. I'll call it his rookie card. Back of that. All right. All right, guys, well, I hope you like number 13. Grover Cleveland Alexander, just an absolutely dominant pitcher, amazing pitcher. 
If you like the video and you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. If you are subscribed, I appreciate your subscription. All right, guys. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon.